All right, everybody. So uh, we are back with another quarantine cast. It might be the last quarantine cast since we are not really in strictly in a quarantine. None of us. So we might be at the very least not be calling them quarantine casts for a while. But uh, at any rate, I'm here with Corona cast. It's even better, I think. Corona cast. Yeah. Well, we definitely have that. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, it looks like looks like that's here to stay for a while. So yeah, it is. Although I guess we can have some some small conversation about that in in and of itself. What should we think of the coronavirus? But at any any rate, so you just heard the voice of Sotak Andras Andre, uh, who's my regular partner in these episodes. So Andras, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good, uh, aside from the fact that I am once again sunburned, uh, and I'm quite frustrated because. <laughs> You know, I've been I've been staying in the sun trying to get a tan, uh, but I do the mistake of trying to, you know, also be productive in a sense. And I just don't have the patience to lay there, so I just walk up and down. And given the nature of, you know, the sun being in a certain position, it just hits me at a certain angle usually. Yeah. <laughs> so I end up pretty much my, my upper back and my shoulders get burned to a crisp and then... Other than that, I'm pretty much white. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not really working out for me. Yeah, I have the most peasant-like tan. <laughs> so, you know, my arms, like, uh, how is it? Like forearms, first third of my upper arm is completely tanned. And my neck and face is tanned. But if I take my shirt off, then it looks awful because the rest of it is white. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a cool the that's called a farmer stan. Yeah, yeah, it is exactly <laughs> like that. But it's crazy. The sun is just so punishing in the summer in in this part of the world. It's just crazy. I mean, I've I've had some hot summers in in other countries as well. But I always notice, man. I mean, in every place, I guess you get to that point where the summer is really nice at first, and you're glad that it's nice and sunny and warm outside. And around August, normally, when I'm in Hungary, mm. for example, around August is the time when I just get kind of tired of the summer. And I'm like, yeah, it would be nice to have some colder weather. Here, I'm <laughs> basically, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm glad when that really shitty, foggy, cloudy, wet winter is over. But I'm never really glad that it's summer here because it's immediately just all of a sudden it's just punishingly hot and you just cannot escape from that hotness anywhere. Mm. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, since you know, Lisha, uh, yeah, yeah, from Facebook, yeah. So, I worked for I worked with him for a while on, online and he is in Algeria. And at a point, I know I was complaining about the weather and he sends me this screenshot and it was like. 43 degrees or something ridiculous wow. like that and i was like that's in celsius by the way mm -hmm. and i was like okay i'll just shut up <laughs> yeah i mean yeah there are degrees to this of course but um yeah anyway so uh let's talk about uh, the state of affairs so how are good news for you let's start with you because uh I'm really interested, like, what the hell is going on in Macedonia? Because I've seen you with a mask in the gym. Like, do you have to wear that? No, we don't need to wear masks in the gym. We kind of need to wear it as we enter. But then as <laughs> soon as we <laughs> get into the dressing room, we can take it off. I'm actually slightly worried about it, uh, that there will be a problem out of this, that all of a sudden I will see news like, ooh, the gyms are not following the measures and people are not wearing masks. Honestly, I would be more relaxed if we had to wear masks and even gloves and whatever. Like, I'm just so glad that the gym is open as of yesterday that I just don't, I don't know. Just please be careful, guys. I don't want you to close again. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so as of yesterday, the gyms are open. So obviously I was, man, so. <laughs> First one in line. <laughs> it's uh, so, I don't know. I shouldn't even say that I was happy because that would be a massive understatement. It would be like someone who is. And I got out of the wheelchair after a surgery and something. And it's like, yeah, I'm glad that I'm out of the wheelchair. It's like, huh. no, that's a massive understatement. So I was, um, you know, that feeling when you're just like buzzing and you just want to <laughs> like you're squeezing your hands together and you just want to giggle. Uh -huh. I had that feeling even the day before when I was looking forward to it. And then when I was getting ready, packing my gym stuff, I was like, oh, my God, I cannot believe this is happening. And when I entered the gym, I was I looked around and honestly I couldn't believe that I was standing there. It was it was a <laughs> surreal experience. And that's the feeling I get when you know I see a beautiful woman naked in front of me. I'm like, e <laughs> shit's about to go down. <laughs> now honestly, I, I honestly the the level of happiness that I felt yesterday. I don't know when I felt like that the last time. It was um, and not just <laughs> before the gym and during. It was. 
I, first of all, I didn't want to leave the gym. So I had this, I had this feeling of, man, like, what if they don't open tomorrow? I mean, what, <laughs> what if this is my last chance to be here again? It's, I, I just wanted to just do another exercise. I'm like, fuck, but I did all the muscle groups that I wanted to train. Like, okay, I'll do calves as well. It's like, okay, I'll do some abs. It's like, oh, I don't want to go. So eventually I left and I was still happy after that. And I hit up a friend or, well, a guy that I know here. And it's like, hey, do you want to grab a drink? I feel like celebrating today. So, um, and normally, I mean, I hope he's not listening to this. Normally, he is the one who is hitting me up and I'm kind of coming up with excuses. Like, excuses. <laughs> and now we went out and normally I'm like, okay, I'm getting tired. It's almost 11. I kind of want to go home. And it's like, hey, do you want to go to another place? Grab another drink somewhere else. And uh, yeah, I was the one who just like wanted to keep staying out. I'm like, yeah, let's go somewhere with people. I'm like the biggest introvert you'll ever meet. It's like, let's go with some good vibes with a lot of people and whatever. It's like, ah, oh, there are not, not enough people in this bar. Let's go to another place. And <laughs> Um, yeah, honestly, I, I felt like I was 16 years old once again, just like wanting to be out and whatever. So, um, yeah, man, whatever happens from now on yesterday was amazing. Hmm. Oh, that's great to hear. That's definitely better than my first time going back, <clears throat> obviously due to obvious reasons. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I unofficially, I, um, uh, I had a far shorter, <laughs> uh, break from the gym. So yeah. There's my my one of my you know one of, one of the guys who also trains people was like I was like yeah well first week you know I just do a couple of deal of workouts so I was like you son of a bitch he was like other people get back to the gym after three months you're starting the you're uh, in the first week when gyms are opening you're taking the deal load. <laughs> yeah I mean that that opens up a, a whole topic in and of itself that I really feel like there are times in our lives when we really feel like the the world is kind of split apart into two parts and one part consists of people that are going through the exact thing that you're going through and then there's the rest of the world so i don't know when you fall in love for example that's one such moment like you you're just in a different headspace like all your friends think you're acting stupid like you seem obsessive you have this weird dreamy look on your face all the time it just seems like you're a retarded person like nobody understands what you're doing and you cannot really share that feeling with anyone. Nobody understands what you're going through, but you know what it is like. Um, and you know when that's happening. So if you have to question, or am I in love? Am I not in love? You know when it happens. And when you go through a breakup, another good example, like the level of heartache that you're feeling, you cannot share that with anyone. Like I have these specific memories of going through a breakup when I was 18 years old. And I remember sitting on a tram later that day and I ran into someone and, hey, how are you doing? And we started talking. And I said, like, yeah, I just went through a breakup. And the person was like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear. And in that moment, I was like, no other person in the world can understand what I'm going through right now. Like, it's not, yeah, she said, like, yeah, I'm sorry to hear. Because it for her, it was like, yeah, whatever, a breakup, that's bad news, something negative. But no, no, you, you yeah. cannot imagine what I'm feeling inside. Like, I just want to die. Like, everything is aching inside of me, every bone. So anyway... This moment was like that, I think, for many people that um, and this was actually one unique moment where most of the world experienced the same exact thing that we experienced. It was like a very shared experience. But in some parts of the world, like in Sweden, it was a very different world because they didn't have the lockdowns. They more or less just kept living as they did before. And I have a friend in Sweden and uh, we talked a few times and it was just so interesting that for him, this whole coronavirus was not even a part of his world. Like, he didn't even follow the news, <laughs> didn't even know what's really going on. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's So are you in a lockdown? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Like, it just didn't concern him at all. For me, my past three months, it was my entire world was the coronavirus. Like, I checked the news like 15 times a day. First thing I did in the morning, is there any news? Okay, is the health minister going to do a press conference? Maybe he's going to share some news, like some changes. Oh, my God, what's going to happen this week? That was my entire world. So, uh, yeah, I really felt like the world just got torn apart into different parts based on what people's experience were. And in that sense, your experience was very different than mine. Because obviously for both of us, the gym is a big part of our lives. And you had access to that. And I didn't. So, yeah. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't really um, <laughs> these past couple of weeks haven't been the happiest. Because, um, you know, for me... Like aside from the fact that right now I you know I have a, a job, um, nothing else has really changed in that you know um, 
uh, my clients have pretty much like ba I have basically two clients right now who have returned the rest of them either just said that you know I'll just come back in the fall or either they are not back in the city so it's whatever um the you know gym attendance let's call it is very 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 low and that's countrywide like I spoke with people in you know Bucharest and you know from all over the country it's the same shit like um, other gyms in the city as well like it's just bad <laughs> and you know I, I mentioned to you this in private that I also have or we also have technically I don't really have it my mom my poor mom has to deal with it my um, you know our dog uh, unfortunately has a tumor mm. and it's pretty uh, evident at this point that he's become blind so oh. So yeah, yeah, that's, um, like I said, I still haven't been home, so um, <laughs> I, I, cup, I got a couple of moments when I would just, I just started tearing up, but mm. I, I think I managed it pretty well, but my, I cannot imagine what my mom goes through, you know, it, he said, my mom said that, you know, he is pretty much just, he just walks around and stuff, but sometimes he bumps into things and then he just becomes, just, you know, just freezes because you cannot, yeah. I mean, you can imagine like what it would be like if you, it's suddenly the world just went dark and it's just crazy and you know um, so yeah that's <laughs> that's pretty much uh, some of the reasons why uh it it's not for me it's not really the happier period of my life and i also mentioned that i tried to find a new place to move into i was hoping to get something either in a far better area you know so we don't have to tra deal with the tra uh, uh, trains whatever uh, trains going by all the time or you know at least find something for cheaper or be able to negotiate renegotiate the terms with this owner so i i can stay here but pay less i was still able to manage that but it's not as little as i would have wanted so yeah it's not really a win in that front either so yeah it's just i just hope that you know <laughs> july starts to uh, turn into starts makes a turn for the better i guess but but hey i guess we could it, it, it could always be worse so yeah, yeah. So first of all, I just want to say I'm really sorry uh, about your your dog's condition. One thing that might make you feel better about that is, um, you know, these things like going blind. Uh, obviously, it's not good for for any creature, dog, cat, human, but for animals, it's um, it's a lot more tolerable, I think, than for us. Because for us, we have that psychological aspect that we are. Mm -hmm thinking about it from like a philosophical point of view and why me how unfortunate am i and animals have a much different coping mechanism they something bad happens to them an injury or even something like this and they're just like okay this is the situation how am i coping now yeah. it's like okay yeah. now i'm gonna use my sense of smell more this and that um so for for your dog it's probably not as horrible as it would be for you if you went through that same thing hmm. but the tumor thing is a really big bitch i mean it's and it's really f incredibly infuriating like it happened to our dog as well and it was really frustrating because she was a, an incredibly lively super happy like youthful <laughs> dog even when she was like yeah. you know 11 12 years old and I really think that she could have lived until like 15. Even Golden Retrievers typically live until like 12. So she basically died exactly when she was quote unquote supposed to. But, mm. you know, just based on how energetic she was, I was like, yeah, this dog is going to live until like 15, 16. And then that fucking tumor came and then it just took her away and uh, incredibly frustrating. My girlfriend's dog now, also a Golden Retriever, now I think nine years old, tumor. Shh. It's a small one, so she will be fine for now. But still, it's like, what the fuck? And... You know, not like these dogs are kept badly. We even tried to like really feed our dogs, like a dog really well. Um, didn't feed her like all kinds of sugary shit. So we were paying attention. Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, So I guess if, if, you know, we can also transition into something more uh, relevant because, you know, you asked me about uh, some of my takeaways. And I guess we can both agree on this, that one big takeaway from these past couple of months has been that, man, having money or rather not having money is really bad like i mentioned to you the, in private that one of the things i hate the most is this whole saying oh money doesn't buy happiness well guess what lack yes, of it money does. <laughs> yeah it does and lack of money for sure buys you a lot of unhappiness like like just imagine like you mentioned this as well that even during the lockdown period like if you had money you probably 
could have figured out a, a way to get an access to a gym. If I had some kind of, you know, crazy money, I would take my dog to the best fucking doctors and maybe we could do a surgery and whatnot. But like someone asked me, like, isn't a surgery possible? And I was like, even if it is, I'm sure it would cost like three, four, five thousand euros. Like, I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> like, and even if I did have, let's say, 5,000 euros to spend or spare, whatever, I would probably have to buy something more important. Like, I would I would pay for, you know, an advance for whatever, set it aside to buy an apartment or stuff like that, because that's just the reality I live in. Like, uh, so that's why I, I mentioned to you in private, I hate this whole, uh, one of the most frustrating, you know, areas of research or whatever it's cited that, you know, well, uh, money doesn't buy happiness because, you know, past a certain point, uh, you know, happiness tends to level off. Like, yeah, past a certain fucking point. You know what's that point? It's like ninety, hundred thousand dollars per per year. Like, yeah, if, if, I, if I made a hundred thousand dollars per year, which is like nine thousand dollars per month, like, yeah, I would be really fucking happy. Like, uh, of course, if I then started making 150, it wouldn't make me substantially happier because with $9,000 per month, I could probably afford anything I could want to. Like $9,000 in Romania, it's you're fucking 0.1% rich in the country, like for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a. <laughs> I think that saying is pretty much a joke at this point. Uh, just the, the biggest question is in how many ways can we make fun of that saying? I mean, pretty much anything I can think of in my life that brought me happiness eventually in some aspects was related to me investing into something first, like me coming to Macedonia, meeting my girlfriend. That was a really expensive plane ticket that I <laughs> bought to come here because it was kind of in a shitty time that I bought that plane ticket. When I went to New Zealand, one of the best experiences of my life, um, that was a really expensive plane ticket and housing is really expensive there. Now, during the virus, uh, I had one month when I didn't work out at all um, one of the worst months of the last eight years, at least. And, um, you know, all in all, I invested more than a thousand euros into the mm. gym stuff that I have at home. And it was not as good as having an actual gym. If I had the funds to rent out the best gym in the city, then that would have been even better. But still, my life quality increased substantially when I had my gym set up at home. So, yeah, I mean, it's, mm. it's just a silly thing. But yeah, I mean, that's, that is definitely one of the one of the big lessons for me and i guess by extension of that it's also that um you know as shallow as it might be and as much as we have to uh, diversify our happiness portfolio as eric helms would say it which is or alberto nunez i don't know who is the originator of that saying it's very true but um yeah man i just cannot i just cannot fucking live at this point in time at least without working out um and of course, the better I can work out, the better it will be. But still, like at least when I was able to like train legs effectively, and I could do some like cable movements and whatever, like it just added whatever five happiness points to my level of well-being instantly. Mm -hmm. So, and that was actually uh, just as a tangent. Um, you know, I didn't work out for a month, and that was because at a certain point, it was just so hard to get into a freaking routine with all of this. This might be just something fun to hear for others that like, no, whenever I decided to commit to something, like I just get kept like be, being punched in the face by annoying circumstances. Like at first I was like, okay, I'm going to go to this outdoor kind of gym park, which is like not really a gym park, just a couple of like bars and whatever, where you can hang and do some pull-ups. Then those got locked down. Okay. Couldn't go there. Then, okay. There is a playground at the corner and there is a, you know, at the gate of the playground, I can do some pull-ups. Okay, I'm going to go there every other morning and I'm going to do some pull-ups. One morning I go out there and the playground is missing. <laughs> <laughs> what? The, the playground was just vanished. It was not there. Like, And the gate was not there. It was just an empty <laughs> like piece of sand. The whole thing. It's like, <laughs> what the hell happened? How did they do this? Like last night, it was here. I went for a walk <laughs> at, at 4 p.m., whatever, when the curfew started. It was here. <laughs> so they just demolished it. And actually, just now they built it back. Uh, they built like a more modern playground or whatever. Um, so yeah, I just freaking couldn't get into a routine with my workouts. And at one point, I was like, yeah, you know what, guys? Fuck you. I'm not going to work out. That was not a good idea because my well being got even worse. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, as soon as I could at least do something, then it got like infinitely better so yeah yeah just just one just going back one final thing on that saying i think it's either said by people who 
just try to you know make themselves feel better about not having money by you know you're lying to themselves that yeah well it doesn't matter if i had money i wouldn't be happier either <laughs> which is obviously false like it's anyone who has who, anyone who didn't have a, a money and then started having money knows this and and uh, or and or is said by people who have a lot of money and never had issues with money and who just try to say that oh well you know money doesn't bring happiness because look i have money and i still have issues like yeah motherfucker you have issues money doesn't just make issues go away your life doesn't become you know uh carefree so to speak you just start having different problems and I would argue that, you know that scene from Wolf of Wall Street when he says that, uh, you know, I've been poor and I've been rich and I choose rich every single fucking time? Like, pretty much that's how I would feel if I ever were rich, but I wasn't, I was never so. But I, I'm pretty sure that if I ever became, like, let's just say that when I went through periods when I was making, you know, not a lot of money, but significantly more money than now, and now, like, I choose the period when I was making significantly more money. <laughs> Like, it's just that simple like yeah you have issues but it's far better than you know seeing your dog suffer and not being able to afford a surgery for example or god like heaven forbid seeing a family member suffer the same fate and not <laughs> being able to afford that kind of surgery like or you know uh, stuff like that i just i don't want to get into it but i think i <laughs> uh we we sort of we agree so there's no really no point in debating this yeah 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 uh yeah exactly i could i could uh kind of keep keep confirming our agreement here but uh yeah i think we're <laughs> in agreement on that um yeah just just one one thing by the way on um the whole coronavirus situation that i kind of wanted to mention in the beginning is um it really you know like I will not be looking at just the simple things that I get to do in the same way anymore. I mean, like last night or yesterday when I went to the gym and then I went out and it was really nice. You know, all the bars were open and we just set into these places and it was nice just seeing people walking down. It just looked normal, you know, <laughs> like last year at this time, I thought of these things as something that will always be there. Like there is no question. Maybe... I will have worse or better situations, but I, of course, I can always do these things. And if anything, you know, I was dieting or something, so I looked at, okay, a bar, these are places to avoid. Like, these are, like, typically barriers to my progress uh, at that specific time because, you know, I was getting ready for the photo shoot. Um, now, I was sitting there, and I'm like, man, when will be the next time when I don't get to do this, you know? Like, what if, what if in August they decide to lock things down again? I mean, maybe not. It would be exceptionally mean, <laughs> an exceptionally mean thing to do. Like they just let us out and they lock, th lock things down again after a month. But what if they do that? I mean, now they open things up in big part because there will be elections in like two weeks. Um, you know, maybe after the elections, they will have no more incentive to let people live. So they will just like, yeah, get the fuck back into your houses. So who knows uh, what's going to happen going forward. So, um, yeah, I don't think I will... I don't think my perspective will be the same on many things uh, after this, and um, but I but I would hope that if this happens the next time, I will be better able to cope with it. Probably I will be really bummed at first, but you know I have experience now dealing with this sucky, like kind of mental torture that this situation can bring. So I hope I will be better able to cope, but it will still be really shit. Yeah. Do you want to? Like, I would agree, of course, with the <laughs> not appreciating the small things. Um, do you want to get into the coronavirus and, you know, uh, give our thoughts on now that the lockdown sort of has ended or whether, like, you know, just how your op opinion may or may not have shifted since, like, March? Or do you want to just avoid the topic? Because I think we might, might, might get controversial because <laughs> I know my opinion have ch has changed. Yeah, man, I, I would be happy to go into that because, um, I mean... F yeah, I mean, compared to March, it's it's night and day. In March, I was legitimately scared of the coronavirus. At this point, <laughs> I don't know. I'm reading very different things in terms of statistics. Like in, in, you can actually find legitimate databases which show that in many countries, the death statistics from you know diseases and things like that is not any worse than in other years. In some countries, I think Hungary is actually one of them. It's actually better than in other years. So. Um, like, that's one thing. I am not sure about that. I know people, people whose opinions I respect generally, that are 100% convinced that this is all some political agenda. I yeah. personally just really hope that they are wrong. 
because <laughs> if they're right, then that means a really dark future coming ahead. But I am not, I don't look at that idea as something ridiculous. Let's put it that way. I just really hope that they are wrong. Um, one thing that I like, I'm like 99% sure of is that, you know, so far I didn't understand like how is it that in Macedonia, um, I think the last time we spoke on this quarantine cast type of episode, I just said that I don't, don't get it. Like, why are we still locked down? We have like 20 cases a day or something. Well, since then <laughs> we had, I think for the last month, pretty much every single day was over a hundred cases, mm, like yeah. many times approaching 200. I'm not even following it anymore. Um, and meanwhile in Hungary, for example, where they didn't even have serious lockdowns at all from the get-go, Gyms were functioning. Um, many things that were completely locked here were functioning. They started easing things up way sooner than here. For like, I think like at least six weeks, everything has been basically completely open. Um, I speak with my mother regularly. She says that you can go to a huge marketplaces, closed marketplaces, where maybe a third of the people are wearing masks. Even people that work in the stores are not wearing masks. So don't talk to me about people respecting the measures better in other countries. And then we can also talk about other countries, for example, in this region, like Greece, Serbia, Bulgaria. They have the same mentality as Macedonians. It's all kind of similar cultures. You know, people like to be together in big crowds, very like social. People are very open. Don't tell me that they respect measures anymore. And people went to freaking football games with full crowds in Serbia. They have like a fraction of the numbers that we had in Macedonia. And I was like, how is that possible? Well, now I figured out how that's possible is that a lot of countries are just straight up lying. Like, and, and nobody can convince me otherwise. I mean, either they are like doing tests in tests wrong here and they're like, whatever, catching, I don't know, uh, the common cold instead of the coronavirus. And that's what gets detected. Or just a whole bunch of countries are just lying about their numbers because it does not make any freaking sense. So that, that, that opinion of mine shifted radically, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel the same way. I was actually looking up some videos um, people perhaps interested in checking out. One is about Eric Weinstein calls attention to WHO China influence, which is on the GRA Clips uh, channel. And the other one is Melissa Chen, who talks about, uh, again, by talks about the WHO and how sort of Taiwan was warning them in January that this new virus is uh, or can be spread, you know, because, you know, supposedly, uh, I don't know if you remember, back in January, it was stated that it cannot be uh, spread. It doesn't have human to human transmission. I don't know if you remember that. It was, yeah. you know, the report said that, uh, yeah, well, it's only transmitted uh, through animals and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> And and they knew that pretty much in January, and they just I don't know ignored it. I don't know what it was. Then there is the whole situation with the masks. You know that initially that they said that you're okay, you shouldn't wear wear masks. Um, then it has been updated. Uh, that supposedly you know you, now you have to, which is okay. I can get on board with that. The number of cases is just ridiculous. Like the reporting, is, like you said, it's just inconsistent. Um, I've heard many, many reports over here in Romania that people have been offered to, you know, they had deceased uh, family members and they were offered money to, uh, you know, state or, you know, report them as COVID victims. I don't know how reliable those are. Again, I could just be hearsay because it's always I heard from so-and-so who heard from so-and-so. So I don't know. Uh, what the situation is. What I do know is that yeah, I was much more worried about it in March, like, you know, when the first uh, uh, Osterholm uh, podcast came out with uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, I, don't, I know we both listened to that episode like three times and uh, we were very worried. And then I know I listened to a couple of other epidemiologists and whatnot. And I was like, okay, this could be really serious. But then, you know, as I started um, reading up and listening to stuff and um, what's his name Elon Musk was saying on GRA again that uh, it's pretty much has been it's, it's, it's known that in the US for example number of cases have been inflated simply to um, from what I gathered they pretty much receive government funds for each and every victim or something like that COVID victim so they have an incentive there um, then I've heard some, some stuff that, you know, the number of cases from day to day had some huge fluctuations 
in the US again, but pretty much the same is, is happening in Romania as well. Like we are supposed to have like 400 cases daily. Um, but then I see people just huge in the central park. It's, it's pretty much a couple of weeks ago. I was, I mentioned this to you that uh, it was like, it wasn't like, it was like when it, when it's the time for the untold festival, which was supposed to take place in like July. So it's pretty much the same time of the year. Um, just huge crowds, like people one next to each other. And I don't see hospital. I, I, I spoke with a couple of nurses and they were like, well, hospitals are empty. Like emergency wards are empty. There is no one there. Like, yeah, there are a couple of patients who are, but no, there's no one in the emergency ward, like the, the ER, like there's not no one who's that sick. And then you pretty much every single athlete you hear like have you heard an athlete that got like sick sick like i heard that Djokovic had it like nothing ufc fighters nothing like ufc fighters relatives um aside from one case which i know is jessica andraj i know had two deaths in her family but i'm not sure i think they were older people so i don't even want to speculate but what's for certain is that people who are athletic and healthy are pretty much i wouldn't say that they are safe but you know pretty much don't really have to worry worry about it much more than, you know, or cold. Like, it's not going to be worse than maybe the worst cold you're going to experience, but you're not going to suffer, I don't know, you're not going to die from it. Like, I know there's been one case which I sent to you. Like, we, we pretty much know every single case uh, where healthy people has been infected and got, like, serious issues because it's been mediated or mediatized, whatever, publicized. Like, there's that guy with tattoos who pretty much came off his series cycle and then was it, I don't know, was in, like, the ER for, like, a week or so, and people were posting, look how much muscle he's lost, look how he, the coronavirus destroyed him. And I was like, yeah, because he was bedridden and probably came off his cycle. Like, he would have lost, like, 75% of that simply by, you know, coming off his cycle and not doing much activity like i don't know how much did the like of course the covid put him in bed rest but um you know like i don't think it's really the best example so what i'm trying to say is that i'm really not worried like in the gym pretty much i don't wear a mask because it's the same thing as as over in macedonia like we are supposed or people who come in are supposed to wear a mask um, until they get into the locker and then you're supposed to take it off. However, the way our gym is laid out is pretty much is the same space. Like we have a, uh, whatever area that you walk through, but it's right next to this, not separated because that sort of regulation would make sense if the gym entrance and locker area was completely separated from the gym, you know, the actual, uh, training facility. But since most gyms are not that way, it just looks ridiculous because, you know, what that means is you could stand on, on in one place and then you could stand like a meter away and you're supposed to wear a mask in one case and not in the other one. It just doesn't make really any, any sense. And then there are other regulations which, again, we are not supposed to use the showers. Like, we are not allowed to use the showers in the gym. Like, do you remember back in March, the first and main message was just wash your hands as much as possible. Like, lovely after a gym workout like you're not supposed to shower like because you know supposedly you can get infected from like from like what fresh running water and then i hear that the um what are they called the swimming pools they are opened like what it's the same fucking water like people are swimming in the same fucking water and that's allowed but you know going to the shower and just you know washing yourself with fresh water is not allowed because that's supposedly more dangerous it's just you know it doesn't make any fucking sense and then when i see these fucking covid idiots yeah. that's how i'm going to call them i know the initial term was used for others but i just call them the people who are you know like like you posted in a sarcastic post people these are the people who probably wear masks when they are alone at home like people who are walking outside wearing a mask today i was i went into a grocery shop to buy a bottle of water and there was this guy who bought some you know can of coke and he was like um is there any uh, place i can disinfect I use a disinfectant to you know clean this and i was like jesus fucking christ dude like like you're drinking coke like sugary water like you probably should be worried like 
probably you should worry more about the content of that can than the fact that you might get COVID from like touching the can and drinking from it. I don't know. I just find it ridiculous. Yeah, man. I mean, it's uh, you brought up brought up you brought up so many points that I feel uh, similarly about. I mean, it's just nothing seems reasonable, and everything seems so just. Um, People pulled some idea out of their ass and like, okay, these are going to be the measures. I mean, just just to start off with, um, just to speak close to home, the fact that the gyms were like the last thing that opened here is beyond ridiculous. I mean, I yeah. regularly walk through a marketplace here, which is, yes, open air. Okay, I get it. It's not a closed space. I mean, it's freaking, it's like looking inside a can of tuna or something. People are freaking on top of each other. Everything is dirty, completely unsanitized. Yes, people are wearing masks, which, by the way, more than likely in 99% of cases, that same mask is the one that they have been wearing for the last two months. <laughs> exactly. Not once cleaned. Um, so, yeah, congratulations. So, that is okay, but the gym, I mean... If, if you look in, inside the gym that I'm working out at, it's the cleanest freaking place you will ever see. And it's actually rarely super crowded. But even if it is, you can actually control it because it's you can have staff members there that are monitoring what people are doing. You can enforce any sort of rules and restrictions. You can limit the number of people there. You can whatever pull the machines further away from each other or whatever. If you see that someone is breaking the rules, you can kick them out. You cannot do that in a bunch of places that were open, public mm -hmm. transport, like a bunch of examples. So that is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the thing that scares me is just, um, you know, if, if this is truly some political agenda thing, I mean, if you were to try to um, enforce some sort of new system upon people, which is a lot more authoritative, authoritarian, whatever, I mean, this would be actually a pretty good way of doing it. Let's face it. I mean, in in Hungary, I heard some things which I don't. I didn't even look into it, but I heard it from a reliable source. So I guess they have read it on some reliable place. Is that now basically the government announced that okay, now the emergency state is no longer in place, but the government maintains that if the coronavirus situation requires it, then the government has the right to take over your property, to take over your wealth. It, it, they can take away your pets. What? Which, uh, I don't even get it. Uh, because whatever, because they could spread the virus or whatever. Like, um, if the, they're not doing it, of course, but if due to the virus it would be required, they have the power to do that. So wow. that is pretty freaking frightening. So honestly, if I could yeah, just predict, yeah. like, when is, where is the best place to, to go now? Because the borders are going to open soon. I will be able to leave this country. Where should I go? Is Hungary a good place to go? Maybe not so much. Is Greece, because it's, I don't know, they are like irresponsible enough that the government is not going to do anything even if things get bad. Maybe that's the best place to go. Hmm. I don't know. Like it's, um, yeah, I, it's, not a, it's not a good thing to be a part of the history books. I was really hoping that we will live through a time which is not going to make it into the history books because it's going to be just too peaceful and boring. But man, really messed up. So I'm worried, worried about the future for sure. Yeah, I just recently rewatched V for Vendetta, so anyone who's seen that movie, um, you know, they can certainly relate or, you know, think or c draw parallels between that movie and the times you're living in. Now, I'm not, like, I actually heard some, some people, <laughs> like legit, someone was explaining in the locker room that David Icke story, you know, the reptilians. That, you know, I don't know who so, so and so saw the Queen of England and she was a reptilian and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, that's retarded. Like, but I, like I'm not saying that, you know, like some people that the virus doesn't exist and stuff like that. I honestly hope that this whole thing was simply a badly managed overreaction. Like, that's the best scenario. God, God give it to us that you're right, please. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's that's what I hope for. Like literally, like yeah, this was a mess. But simply, we are you know we are humans, and we were too clueless and didn't know what to do. And we thought that, you know, we just you know it's pretty much we made re re over really emotional reaction and stuff like that. And it wasn't anything premeditated in the sense that not premeditated in the sense that a virus, but premeditated in the sense that uh, let's reinforce these measures because we could have this to gain from it like i just hope that that's not going to happen but yeah 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 it's um 
The thing that actually made this whole thing harder for me is that I really felt alone with this whole thing here. Like, um, hmm. you know, I mean, obviously we talked about it, like you shouldn't be glad for other people's suffering. And if someone is going through some shit thing, it doesn't make your experience any better. And of course, that's all true. But it at yeah. least helps if, like, let's say if we were roommates and we were both like pissed off that our gyms right. are closed, yeah. then it would have helped that we can like rant to each other about it, right? <laughs> but like, I felt so alone here because, um, like, for example, my girlfriend, like, her life basically didn't get impacted by this whole thing <laughs> at all. Like, she yeah. still went to work. Um, yeah, she didn't go out for drinks with her, her friends, but that's not something that. It's, it's like super important to her anyway. Right. Uh, she still spends the same amount of time with her family. So whenever I talked and, and, you know, conversely, my life was like completely turned over by this. So whenever I was ranting to her about this, I almost felt like I was ranting about the Iraqi war or something. Her, her reaction right. was like, oh, yeah, 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 it's really bad. It's like I could, I could see that she doesn't care. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, in theory, she knows that it's really bad, but it doesn't impact her. So it was, um, but yeah, man, it, the, in Macedonia, is so full of COVID idiots, like you said. Like <laughs> yesterday I was out and, peop, you know, just young people walking up and down. And I saw some of these people, which um, I will use a Hungarian technical term here. The listeners won't understand. Untudatos <laughs> faskalap. <laughs> just like, you know, open space. And I just I just see this, whatever, 22-year-old girl with this completely like superiority complex just screaming from her face wearing a mask in the middle of the square, like no, no people around her. And I can see this look in her eyes, like just, she was even like shaking her head kind of constantly, like, oh, look at all these people not wearing masks. It's, it's horrible. And and um, yeah, I mean, so, and, and actually, like, I see a lot of these, because um, I was tuning into the health minister's um, press conferences, and man, my Macedonian improved so much in these past two months. I was, like, understanding everything from those freaking press conferences, like, and I was reading through the comments under them, and, like, nine times out of ten, people just... Uh, all caps complaining that they are like not locking things down. Like, look, look how many cases. Like, why don't you do something? And I'm like, man, why don't you just comment straight up? Like, I demand to be locked up. I don't want to be allowed to leave the house. Like, why don't you complain about that? Like, just make it straightforward. Then, so, ah, oh, that made it even more frustrating. Yeah, I can I can only imagine how frustrating it must be to you know, because if people don't you know relate to your struggles, whatever, but if it's your actual relative, but significant other. Uh, I would imagine that would make you feel really lonely. Like, if if you know, it's, it must be like something like, well, if it's like you're supposed to meet my other half, and not even yeah. you can, you know, <laughs> understand what I'm going through. Like, who can? Like, I can only imagine that. I mean, I was alone, but you know, my colleague lived uh, very close to me. He moved. <laughs> he was luckier in the sense that he found a new place, and it's actually a very good place for. Her. He, he will pay the same amount I'm paying here, but it's a far better place and far, far better apartment. So, yeah, good for him. Um, so, yeah, but at least, you know, we had each other. <laughs> it sounds a bit weird, but, yeah, we, we had that. You know, we, we had the gym. We were able to train, and at least we were able to do that because, uh, you know, he was saying that, ah, he was training like three to four times per week, maybe. And I was like, yeah, that, I trained like six days a week because, shit, if all went wrong... At least I had this to rely on. Like, yeah, I didn't do much today. Yeah, maybe I ate too much, but shit, I at least trained. <laughs> I had no, at least I had two hours of actual productive work, something that, you know, improves my life in a way. Because if I lost that, and then I had, you know, pretty much no money, no gym, um, no one to, you know, talk to and stuff like that, and then I would have really would have been depressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's... um. I don't know. Speak, speaking of that, actually, I'm, I'm actually very pleasantly surprised by um, how I came out of this. Because uh, honestly, I couldn't really judge how my physique changed. Because here in the house, I have a magic mirror, basically, which <laughs> ev shows everybody like five body fat percentages slimmer and like just muscular and whatever. Like my girlfriend, um, she like fluctuates in weight all the time. Like sometimes she gets like chubby, then she loses weight, whatever. Um, you know, I, I love her. I always think she's hot, but that's what she's doing. <laughs> and um, she always stands in front of that mirror. And she's like, oh, actually, I didn't put on that much. And I'm like, eh, honey, you kind of did. <laughs> but that mirror just shows everybody super hot. So I, I couldn't judge it right. based on that. Um, so I, I took that uh, most muscular selfie in my gym uh, changing room mirror, and if I compare it to the ones that I took before the gym's closed, it's like, yeah, actually very, very similar. I'm not as lean, 
and maybe I lost some size, but I uh, actually went back on the machines that I was using before. And on some, I didn't lose any strength. Uh, I could maintain everything with the stuff that I was able to do here. On some, I did, but not nothing like super substantial, like, um, I don't know, like two two reps. It was like something that I was able to do, like 15 reps with maybe it's like 11, 12, something like that. But uh, but but just what, what I wanted to say uh, when I started this is um, like... So I have this set up now. So I have like a cable thing that I'm able to use so I can do like cable curls and lateral raises and whatever. So I was like, yeah, actually it's not that bad. Like even if the gyms never open up, this is pretty good. Man, I, I used the cable stack in the gym. Oh my goodness. Like I was like, <laughs> oh, so this is how it's supposed to move. It's like the smoothness. It was just like out of this world. It was like, holy shit. Uh, it's just like... Um, yeah, man. Honestly, I'm I'm freaking out. Like, when when are they gonna close it down again? Because I'm pretty sure it will happen. But at least, at least if I can use it for another like two months, if if I can use it for another three months, at that point I will be like, you know what? I I'm not even going back. Close it down. I accept my fate. Just please let it let me use it for another two months, and then I will be like satisfied. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I love the enthusiasm in your voice when you talk about the cable stack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even, I don't even want to think about that. Like, no fucking way. Um, you know, like I, I really, I, at this point, I really do hope that colleges start in in October because that means a bunch of students will come back. Initially, I was hoping that they. I was like, you know what, even if they don't come back, at least the apartment prices will go down. Because I don't know if you know this, but my city is the most expensive one in the in the country, uh, largely because of students. And everyone was like, well, well uh, I'm not going to rent it out for you for that price because uh, I just, I just, at worst case, I'll just, you know, I'll leave it empty. And then in October, things will go back to normal. And I was like, we fucking idiots. So that means July, August and September three months you you rather keep it empty instead of you know renting it out for a lower price in hopes that you know in october students will come back and you can start charging again these ridiculous prices like i would not be surprised like per capita or per let's say average or median income romania like or, or our city is probably i don't know if it's probably not quite top 10 because you know how you have london and stuff but I'm very certain that it's top like 30 in the world. Like there's no fucking way. Again, per capita, not in absolute amounts, but it's more than like one bedroom apartment is like 60%, let's say, of the average income or median income, maybe 50 or something like that. How are the gyms, by the way? I didn't ask you in Macedonia, like uh, compared to, I don't know, you have, you've been training in the same gym last year as well. Yeah, okay, so you have an idea about, you know, seasonal fluctuations, because, of course, over here as well, like, June is an okay month, and then July and August are pretty much the worst, because people go on holidays and stuff, but even compared to that, it's very bad, like, it's maybe 25, 30% of it's what's supposed, to, what it's supposed to be in this time of the year, and all of the people are pretty much people who are regulars, like, I don't think I've seen... It's maybe like three people who I don't know, <laughs> like literally in the entire week. Like, yeah, I mean, so here normally, yeah, I mean, pretty much. So in July and August are like the it's really bare, you know, barely any people in the gym, um, which is funny because like someone like me who is just a consumer but a like a very dedicated gym rat for me, which is the best period, is the worst period for you. Yeah, um, and then of course. Um, of course. But yeah, in Macedonia, in a normal year, basically July, August is the time when everybody goes to Greece. <laughs> that's when that's when Greece becomes like one and a half times its size because mm. it's full of Macedonians and Serbians. And um, so yeah, that's when that's the time when everybody goes on vacations. And yeah, I guess people are just I don't know. I guess they cannot be bothered to go to a gym because it's like so warm and everything. Like. They just go to work, and then as soon as they can, they just go home and they sit under the AC, and in the evening, maybe they will go out. So, yeah, and then, of course, there is the New Year's February craze. Yeah, so, you know, uh, initially, before we opened, we had this uh, idea, or, you know, we had these hypotheses that uh, either it's going to be the best year ever, because people, you know, have been so fed up about, you know, staying inside, and then... 
uh, you know, gotten have they have gotten fat and whatnot, and now they are really eager to you know get back to working out or start working out and stuff like that, or the complete opposite would happen, and people would just couldn't be bothered either because they were inside for so long and you know they just have forgotten what it feels like to you know have gotten out of the because you know you, it's very easy to lose a good habit compared to how hard it is to get rid of a bad habit um and you know people have perhaps suffered some income losses and stuff like that and and pretty much the second option has happened which is funny in the sense that so the people who i know people who were complaining or were you know uh, posting that or asking me or in the gym sending messages like oh I cannot wait for the gym to open blah 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 and then they never showed up <laughs> never and these are the worst kind of people yeah so yeah it's just really really it's I have this there is this saying I guess it's in every language because it's that saying in even in English that you know beggars can be choosers uh, but I use that all the time for Romanians that they are Romanians are poor and also pretentious like pretty much choosers, like stuff like that. That's how it comes across. Like, yeah, you, you know, um, you were complaining about something, and then only like you wanted that only when it wasn't available to you. And right now, like the moment it became available, you were like, ah, well, I wasn't really interested anyway. <laughs> like what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, to me, it's almost offensive to to hear that like someone someone has access to a gym and doesn't use it. It's like, ma'am. Um, it's kind of like when, <laughs> you know, there's a guy on Instagram who has like the best home gym probably in the entire planet. Um, it's like, he has a better gym than I have here in Macedonia, which is like the best gym in the city. He has a better gym at home. And I just see the way he's using that gym and it's like, man, you're butchering every exercise. Like you have that treasure at home and you're not making the most of it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Yeah. How is your body comp uh, goals and progress and, and whatever, all of those things, maybe we can touch on that. Like, um, how are you planning on doing something now that uh, things calm down a little bit at least now or um, any plans? Yeah, I mean, I sent you that picture that was from today. Um, whatever, I'm I'm around 90 kilos, so I, I got as high as 93. Um, I'm starting to slowly creep downward um, and yeah. I, <laughs> my goal is still the same like I still haven't had a week like which just was perfect <laughs> I, it just it seems to me that either I you know I I buy something or my mom brings me something or someone else brings me something <laughs> which is funny yeah um so I guess I'll just have to you know you were mentioning this guy who uh, intentionally just has a cheat day I don't really plan on doing that but I just I try to, you know, keep like five or six days lower than like, I try to keep them maybe around 2,500 calories, which is like really, not really, but quite low uh, for me or decently low. <laughs> Let's put it that way in the eventuality or the high probability that I will probably have a day where I will, I will be higher in calories. Um, so yeah, um, I try to, you know, just slowly creep. Uh, bring the body fat down and uh, and it's the same old story pretty much every single year try to bring the body fat down and see how much muscle i gained and then i probably just realized that i gained almost nothing which is uh, the reality of uh, natural bodybuilding i guess yeah yeah i mean um yeah pretty much now now I, I got really motivated to get a little bit leaner again. I'm not nothing like crazy shreddedness. Uh, I won't do that to my girlfriend again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's um, that's a nice nice thing about the summer is um, you know, in theory, there shouldn't really be that big of an advantage cutting in the summer compared to doing it even in the winter. But in practice, yes, there is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because of the higher need levels, because you're out more, and and also like. There's something about the the fact that you know you have all these beautiful fruits that are in season. Oh yes. And you you walk past the marketplace and like all these beautifully polished like peaches and watermelon and everything. I mean, it, it looks like mm. that's like the junk food of the summer. Like you look at that. Like normally people don't right. in the winter they don't look at like apples and stuff that you can get in the grocery store and like oh I would love to have that. But now because it's really warm and it just feels so appealing to have a huge bite of some really juicy watermelon uh, i actually have two big pieces in the fridge waiting for me so <laughs> there you go a really nice thing actually is to put it in the freezer uh, i don't know if you tried that like uh 
uh. carving it out from the shell, uh, kind of cutting it up and putting it in the freezer. Oh my goodness, it is phenomenal. But doesn't it become like icy that it doesn't actually freeze? Uh, so you don't want to leave it in too long. Like maybe put it in like uh. a, maybe an hour before uh, you would eat. But then it just ends up in the same way, like same place. <laughs> um, yeah, so you want it to be like really cold, but not frozen, basically. That's what you want to do. Yeah, but mine has been in the fridge for like two days. <laughs> I think I think I'll accomplish this yeah, end goal. Yeah. yeah, what I like to do actually is have like a bit, pretty big piece like before a meal. Because I don't really, like the thing that I like to do with fruits, which is like put a lot of sweetener on it and some cocoa powder, have it with some cottage cheese or something. It doesn't really work with melons for me at least. Mm. So I like to have it like before uh, the meal and then I will have some whatever other fruits and some protein with it after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree completely. And uh, there's other uh, factors which contribute or, you know, help you and aid you in fat loss, like none or, you know, not in the least the fact that, you know, you're probably like, unless you are like me or the way I was like a couple of when I was younger, like if you want to keep your shirt on the entire summer, then yeah, whatever. But otherwise, you know, you have to take your shirt off every now and again. And I, I really hate that feeling of being bloated and stuff and just looking disgusting even towards myself. So that's a nice bonus. And yeah, like you mentioned, bunch of fruits. I love fruits, so every single fruit you can imagine, I pretty much love it. And then there are fresh veggies. I just have some. I, I ate yesterday some tomatoes, which were good for the first time this year, because I had a couple of ones, maybe like three weeks ago, two to three weeks ago. Those were terrible, like just pretty much like water, like no taste whatsoever. These were actually delicious, so that's a good sign. And of course, you know we have some fresh cucumbers from the from our garden which my mom uh, brings me uh, i love those and you know just and they become really cheap so you can make these huge salads for like very cheap and then you know then you have some eggs or some meat or stuff like that and you're on your way so yeah those are all good things to help you and you know towards your fat loss goals yeah yeah by the way just some good news that i have for the listeners that are still with us is you know i've been asked in a couple of comments on youtube to put on like a full day of eating or like show how i do the auto regulatory eating whatever and i decided like fuck it i'm gonna do it so i will show because now i'm kind of doing this uh, fat loss thing uh, just to get a little bit leaner. So I will do like a couple of different days. Like this is the day when I'm like pushing a bit harder. So I'm like intentionally trying to go like pretty low on calories without like tracking them. This is like a more moderate one. Maybe this is the day when I let myself go. I will eat out. So I will do like a couple. So I think that will be really helpful for people. Um, mm, nice, nice. Yeah, I actually had the same. I have a problem is, you know, I have this problem. <laughs> you spoke about this. I have so many ideas and then I never really do them. And of course, ideas kept in your head don't really help yeah. <laughs> anyone. So uh, I had the same way. I I was actually had, the, uh, maybe you, maybe, uh, hopefully you don't steal it. <laughs> I can, I'm kidding. I would do it in Romania anyway. Um, I had this uh, exact idea of something similar to what you outlined here, which is, you know, rapid fat loss, but in pretty much in tiers. And the lowest tier would be pretty much, or highest tier would be considered the one in lowest in calories, basically. So that would be just, you know, your typical protein spare modified fat. Like just protein, like with, from sources which are pretty much, like not cottage cheese type of protein sources, because that has a lot of carbs, relatively speaking, from the lactose. But, you know, chicken breast and stuff like that, and just plain veggies with the lowest carb content possible, and that's it. And then, you know, uh, the other tier would be, uh, you know, add some other stuff, and then probably the highest, you know, lowest tier or the highest in calories would be probably something you would do or you do regularly, which is just eat healthy sources and don't bother with calorie counting because the audience I would target with it would probably still lose fat, because, you know, if you replace your junk food with the healthier alternatives, you can probably still lose fat. It's just, you know, ways for people to lose fat without actually counting calories. Um, and I was I was, I was, was thinking about the tiered system simply because, you know, uh, different people have different uh, goals and uh, some have more or less weight to lose and some have, you know, different uh, motivation levels and stuff like that or different... Uh, abilities to adhere to a deficit so so yeah, i thought it would be a good idea and as far as your f photos i mean they look great i mean <laughs> the body fat you have right now is something shit i would i would really really happy with as a even as an end goal i mean if i got down to like 
uh, what you said for 84 point something kilos like 84 85 at that point i would probably look start to look decent i was i was just telling this to someone yesterday which is something you mentioned to me in private which is that the way or the point i am right now and the that 84 85 range is pretty much the most unrewarding period and is the period that's going to suck the most because from like 90 to 85 i'll just get smaller and and i'll just look worse like um i won't be filled out uh, pumps are gonna probably get worse and worse but i won't be lean you know in a way that people actually can notice or you know be uh i wouldn't call it you know uh, surprised or you know wowed by it but simply you know, to notice the whole oh, wow you look lean and they would be probably like oh what happened you look smaller like what's going on <laughs> yeah yeah it's um it's something that is is worth bringing up again and again and that's kind of one thing that i'm struggling with a bit on my youtube channel is that i'm still i mean i haven't done that many videos that i still cannot say new things but obviously eventually you have to kind of start repeating yourself but i think that's something that's worth repeating more and more because that is very real and it's really useful i think for people to know that that's normal like if when you go through that period when it's unrewarding like you don't you just look worse and you're struggling at the same time so it's it's kind of like why am i doing this and then <laughs> at that point so let's say you're at 90 kilos now you start cutting, you go down to 87. It's like, wow, okay, that's that's pretty decent progress. Yeah. Like that's three percentages of like maybe pure body fat that you dropped. But you look kind of worse because your glycogen levels and everything is lower. So you just look fl flat and kind of soft. At that point, if you say, fuck it, and then you have like a big cheat day, then, you know, temporarily you will be like filled out. Like you will have like yep. better pumps again and whatever. You you will, of course, feel great during eating the, the whole bunch of food. But then you obviously set yourself back. Whereas like if you just put your head down and you go for another like three, four weeks, then all of a sudden, and it's almost like overnight, like you have that moment when you take another selfie. It's like, oh, okay, now I see those new details and now my body definitely has a better like shape to it and whatever. And it's almost like you never know when that day comes when you notice that. And when that happens, then all of a sudden it's like, then you're motivated to keep going because then you have that reinforcement. And of course, from then on, the leaner you get, basically, technically, the harder the diet gets, because then you start getting more hungry. But at the same time, it's almost like daily changes at a certain point. Like when, you know, when I was like 8% body fat and getting to seven, then my body was scre screaming at me, I felt like so lethargic and hungry. But I basically look better every single day. So that was very rewarding. So it's weird how that works. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree, and uh, I mean, you know me. You you know that's pretty much exactly what I what I did. Um, and even in like, I'm I keep thinking back that if had I stuck it out like in, you know, early April or something like that, because I mentioned this that you know uh, when I started the the lockdown started in March, like when the gyms have closed, I was 88 kilos and I got down to like 86. Had I stuck with it shit at this point i could be 81 82 kilos something like that and i would look freaking amazing you know whatever <laughs> relatively speaking I, I i will never look amazing because you know genetics and stuff but compared to myself compared to the way i look right now i would look far better and we all know it like we have a couple of people in the gym who are have leaned out nicely in the lockdown which is impressive and i'm looking at them like you're small but you still look so great like god damn it <laughs> yeah yeah it's really um it's really really funny how that works yeah i mean those moments of regret the worst is when um so when i had those i mean from a diet and like fitness perspective that was definitely the worst period of my life when i was perpetually dieting but i was binging really frequently so i was still on the net balance the trend was that i was getting fatter month to month so like each month basically i ended up looking worse mm. but i was sort of dieting the whole time it was just like okay two days of diet huge binge okay one day of diet huge binge okay maybe a week of diet so it was like terrible um yeah so you know after you know when i was like getting fatter and fatter and i eventually like got up to like the fattest that i've been and then i looked back at those past months and i was like man if i could have at least just you know, just did half of the binges or I ate like in like a surplus the whole time. I wouldn't have gotten leaner, 
but I still wouldn't be as fat as I am now. I could have eaten a 200 calorie surplus. I would be completely diet fatigue free <laughs> yeah. by now. I would be probably sick of eating by now because like it's it gets annoying to just keep eating in a surplus and whatever. Like you kind of feel soft. You have the urge to like do a mini cut, but no, I keep eating in a surplus. Like it kind of gets annoying. Um, I would be in such a better spot right now. I wouldn't be as fat and I would be mentally so much better. And now I am completely burnt out on dieting and I'm fatter. This is like, oh my God, how bad this is. So uh, like those moments yeah. are the worst. I can I can definitely empathize with that. And uh, no, it's funny how, uh, you know, it's stupid psychology. Like it's, um, I have two regrets in life. Like one, I cannot talk to animals. And, you know, like for example, when we had to take our dog to the vet or, you know, these do these scans and whatnot, like, I would have really loved for me to be able to explain to him like, yeah, this is going to be for your health and it's it's, it's going to be something beneficial for you because it probably would have would have stayed in place, uh, stuff like that. And then to be able to actually, you know, um, set your brain or rather, you know, be able to always recalibrate your focus towards your actual long-term goal instead of being distracted by these short-term impulses and uh, stuff like that because it's so crazy how i've had this happen many many times like um i had maybe a high calorie day and that next morning i woke up and i was like i was regretting it and i was like okay this is never gonna happen again and I'm just going to be so motivated and I was still bloated and stuff. And I was like, I'm not really going to eat today. I just go to the gym and train and be. And then I went to the gym, I trained. And on my way home, <laughs> I forgot everything. And I went to the store and I got something which I wasn't planning on doing. Or maybe I got home and I was like, okay, I haven't eaten anything all day. Let's just get again something delicious and stuff like that. And like going, looking at it from the outside, like, I would be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you have this goal set up. Why can't you just stick to it? And um, I really, really love that saying that Jordan Peterson uh, mentions in uh, in his talks, which is that it's uh, harder for it's harder to rule yourself than to rule a city. And that's Im unbelievably true because, and he uses this example as well. Like, he says that, you know, how many of, like, people who don't agree with that, like, just think, how many of you have said that January 1st, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start uh, exercising, I'm gonna stop drinking, and I'm going to quit seeing that toxic friend. And then what do you do? Two days later, you haven't gone to the gym, and then you're drinking with that guy who said you're never gonna meet again. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I mean, that is, you know, probably a lot of people that are listening to my stuff. And, um, you know, maybe they are, I don't know, they, they haven't gotten close to their physique goals and whatever. And they see me and they see a someone who has this amazing self-discipline and whatever. And I know that there are much more disciplined people on this front than me. Um, but it's really, when I think of other goals that I set for myself, and I, I remember specific goals that I set when I was, um, you know, four years ago, five years ago. And, you know, like some of them have been, if, if I would have followed through with those things, I would have accomplished them like two years ago by now. <laughs> um, of course, some of them were silly, like some goals you just set and you don't even think it through. Like, is that even reasonable? You don't even have any sort of plan of how you're going to get there. It's just like really vague. Like if I'm going to set the goal now, it's like, okay, by age 35, I will make a million dollars a year. Like I can say that, but Okay, and how am I going to do that? No idea. So some goals are just stupid um, without an actual plan, but some were like not unreasonable. And some of them I didn't accomplish because I basically just at a certain point just stopped taking action completely. And now I look back, it's kind of similar to the whole fat loss thing that if I just did like some tiny, tiny thing for that like every day, but really the smallest thing, like if we are talking about a podcast, it would literally be like writing up like 10 words for a uh, a new podcast script or something like that. Like it would, it could be that easy. If I just did that, I would have accomplished a whole bunch of those goals. So that's, yeah, I, I have a lot of these regrets. So, um, yeah. and the thing that sucks with physique it should, we, is what you mentioned uh, earlier is that not only can you not do the things that will move you forward, you can actually do a lot of things that will move you backwards. Yeah. <laughs> like for example, like with podcasts, for example, like, yeah, you could do something like, you know, smash your microphone stand or stuff like that <laughs> which would be something that would move you backward but like realistically 
you haven't done anything towards your podcast, okay, you haven't progressed, but you're you still haven't published any episodes, like you're still at ground zero. But physique wise, you can actually not just be at the, your current body fat level or weight level or whatever, but you can actually do a lot of harm and regress even more by by you know not sticking to your um, to your guns, no pun intended. Like another episode I would recommend for people to check out is uh, an awaken. You know what's 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 that term? Uh, wake up call. Uh, yeah, <laughs> is uh, there is a podcast from Jocko Willink, which I know is you you do you you don't really like him in the sense that he's so unreasonable, like mm. so far you cannot really relate to him because he he just seems like an alien. Yeah, which I I understand. However, this episode is very good. It's called uh, Becoming on. Let me look it up. A supple leopard. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, so it's episode number one seven four. With Echo Charles, set standards become an eminently qualified human, and the episode pretty much walks you through the oops, uh, it walks you through the um, Marine Corps fitness report basically, and pretty much it has a bunch of um, categories and whatnot, and it you have a, a zero to five rating, and it's they pretty much go through what it means to be a five, for example, like for example with your diet. And I think he has a new book out. Uh, let me see. I think it's called The Code or something like that. Yeah. So another episode which uh, talks about that is episode number 226, two, uh, two, two, 226 with Dave Burke, The Code, The Evaluation, The Protocols of Path. So in this one, they go through not just... Um, so pretty much the book is a span from that. It doesn't just talk about, uh, you know... Uh, Marine Corps uh, standards, but rather standards for an eminently qualified human being. So pretty much, if you wanted to be your best version possible, if you were a machine, what would be the things you would have to do? And uh, you could compare that to what you're doing currently. And yes, fives are, they would be perfection. Like it would be much like, you know, it's like if Jesus is the perfect human being, like this is what Jesus would do, like in every aspect of his life, or stuff like that. And like for example, with uh, diet, with diet, like five would be, I ate only the perfect. Uh, I had this perfect diet in quotation marks. Like every single calorie was accounted for. I ate only the amount of calories I needed. Every single uh, diet or whatever, every single food item was. Uh, selected so carefully that you know I hit all of my nutrition uh, requirements. I I ate nothing that didn't contribute towards that uh, no my nourishment and stuff like that. Pretty much, I ate nothing for my enjoyment. It was all for physical well-being and stuff like that. Which I guess you know is debatable because sometimes eating for your mental well-being is also important. But this is you know from a different perspective. It's just interesting to listen to, and it wakes you up because. I remember listening and it was stuff like that. Like, for example, they were saying how, like, doing the, like, most people have this idea that if you, do, let's say you work at a job, if you do the stuff you are required to do, you think, how would you rate that? I'm like four or five, right? I do everything I'm required to do. It was like, no, that's like a one or a two, maybe. Like, just doing what you're required to do is barely the average, barely. Like, that's, that's nothing. Like, that's expected of you. Like that's you don't get bonus points or rewards for doing what you're supposed to do. No, like you should go out of your way to not only do what you're supposed to do, but anticipate problems that might pop up. Like and uh, come up with solutions to fix those problems even before they arise and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think it's uh, there is value in doing those sorts of exercises, and, and I think that's that's one good aspect of these like January first type moments where it's. Because it's such a cliche that, okay, it's the beginning of the year, this is new me, whatever, like, we can joke about it, and of course it is funny and kind of ridiculous in some ways, but at the same time, there is a benefit in knowing like, okay, this is universally the time when people are trying to make a change, mm -hmm. so this is the time to reflect, and I think... Um, doing some big like journaling exercise and like, okay, what are the areas that I want to change, whatever. Like I did uh, Jordan Peterson's um, 
what's it called? The, Understand myself. Yeah, the no, I did the self-authoring uh, program of, of Jordan Peterson, and it actually, it was it was great. And I later I kind of made my own version. Like I did this writing exercise. Like I really systematically broke down my life and uh, what are the priorities, what are things that I should improve on, and some things worked out, some things didn't. Um, and of course, the big big thing about all of these things is consistency, right? Like um, hmm. like constant application and constant reminders because sort of it, it it become it can easily become the thing that you mentioned about your diet when in the beginning of the day you're so fired up about doing the right thing but then when the evening time comes it's kind of a different you and <laughs> that can kind of happen with these things is that you have this inspired mm -hmm. moment when all of your plans and everything seems so reasonable and it seems so straightforward. Like, of course, these are the things, the things that I should be doing. Like, how come I didn't do them so far? Like, I had had a bunch of these moments when I met some in, inspirational person or I attended some seminar or something. But then, you know, a week later when the kind of the m monotony of the everyday grayness kind of sucks you in, then all of those things, they're just not on top of your mind. Kind of, you just fall for the, that, yeah. that you know, the the saying of uh, James Clear, which is brilliant. Like you don't, what is it? You don't rise to your potential or something. You don't rise to the level of your expectations. You fall to the level of your habits or something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Which is, yeah, he is full of these sayings, which you just read and like, man, that is just so true. That's just so right. It's one of those. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the same stuff is being said in UFC. Like people, you know, people who say, who have this idea that, Oh well, I don't have to train martial arts because then you know, if if something happens and I have to defend myself, you know this inner animal will come out and you know I will, I will, I will just my body will instinctively know what to do and no, he will probably just freeze and just either panic and run away, which is the best case scenario, or you will just get your butt kicked. And the same is true. Like they say that people will be like so many fighters. Like I watch UFC, so that's why I'm saying this. So many fighters say they don't remember the fight. Like, literally, like, they do not remember the fight. Like, they might have won a fucking fight, and they are like, where am I? Oh, the fight is, is over. Who won? Uh, I won? Okay, great. Like, literally. Like, and, and then then you start wondering how how can how were they able to fight? Because they have drilled that particular move or those, you know, those combinations for thousands and thousands and thousands of times, and then it just becomes automatic. And that's how it has to be with your habits if you want to be successful. Because, yeah, if you have to, you know, rely constantly on your willpower or, you know, constantly you rely on your best judgment chances are you're not going to you're not going to um to make decisions based off of that and one thing i wanted to mention um going back to the advantage of being lean uh, aside from the fact that it's rewarding is the vanity aspect of it and the attention you get and i know that some people are less more or more or less motivated by that but and you know i i uh, you mentioned this that you uh, you weren't really impressed by the attention you received when you were so lean uh so you know you said that i, I shouldn't expect for it to be life-changing but you know this colleague of mine like last week we were i uh, sent you those photos like when he walks around like everyone just looks at him like what the fuck like and he he feeds off of that and i know that it's really person dependent and that's his personality which is true but you know, I would be fairly confident in saying that more people would actually um, do that than more people would not. Like, if they were in a body fat percentage where people would actually be impressed by them or, you know, would actually notice them like, oh, wow, you look really great. Maybe it would make them think twice before, you know, uh, getting or, you know, choosing that junk food over that piece of healthier alternative because... Once you get into that habit of, you know, habit, whatever, that becomes a routine for you. Like, you become, you stand to notice that wherever I go, like, women look at me like, oh, wow, that guy looks really nice. And guys look at, let you like, oh, wow, that guy looks really, I, w I wish I could look like that, that fucker, <laughs> stuff like that. Like, if, 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 if girls look at you with admiration and guys look at you with envy, I think it's much easier to, um, to stick to your diet and again that really only happens once you're really lean because if you went from like 20 percent to like 16 percent like yeah but you did that but no one will really care and 
not many people will compliment you, <laughs> you know. Whereas if you went from like 12 to 8 or, you know, 15 to 10 or something like that, that's much more, relatively speaking, visible. Yeah, honestly, I think that's the one benefit of being a fitness professional is that um, you can get some of that uh, that reinforcement and the gratification for your physique. Like uh, Jeff Cavalier, who I know has been a <laughs> recent topic of controversy on YouTube, but, you know, he is someone who stays at like, you know, 7% mm -hmm. body fat year round. And, you know, he uploads videos like every other day or something. And, you know, Shirtless. hundreds of comments about, yeah, hundreds of comments about how freaking amazing he looks. Um, for me, it doesn't help actually. And this is not something that bothers me, honestly, like really not the slightest, but it doesn't help with my motivation that here, Pretty much, I get the most compliments when I'm at my fattest, like when I'm when I'm like bulked up and whatever, and I'm like at the point where, okay, this is getting a bit ridiculous. That's when uh, like my girlfriend is like, oh my god, like you look so big and strong and you look amazing. Like I meet her girlfriends, same thing. Like oh yeah, you look really good. Um, her family is like, uh, wow, like you, you never look this good. And then when I'm at the body fat percentage where I'm, I like myself the most visually, then sort of the reactions that I get is like, yeah, yeah, he's way too skinny, but well, he likes it, you know, and he's really disciplined. That's the only compliment I get, how disciplined I am, but yeah. Yeah, but I think it's, it's probably due to the fact that you're not really, you're really covered up or you're in a t-shirt and you know that in a, in a looser t-shirt you look like crap yeah but if you're like in a really and i mean you know my colleague he's, he's, he's jacked yeah. <laughs> it's and he's also like he wears clothes especially when he goes out like, like, of, of course like i'm not judging him like of course he wears clothes that highlight his muscularity instead of hiding it i mean he would have to be crazy for not do that to not do that so that's what i'm that might be the difference plus like probably it's an age thing or because you know i'm i'm talking about youngsters who are you know impressed by that like f your girlfriend's mom is probably not really impressed because she's probably not into you know bodybuilding and whatnot but you know people who are your age or slightly younger or stuff like that um i know that for me i would probably receive a lot of compliments if i was if i was like really that lean and of course that wouldn't really um there, there's this say. There are sayings that you know, and I'm like Nick you know, that really, wouldn't really make up for the suffering in that sense. But uh, I think it, it, I guess, I guess it's just one way. You mentioned this to me. I don't know what we we're talking about, and you were like, "Yeah, well, one way to find out." So, yeah, one way to yeah. find out. Yeah, actually, um, one thing I wanted to bring up, uh, just our conversations about leanness and achieving other goals, is um, yesterday when I was out with this guy. And, um, yeah, whatever, I was getting a bit tipsy and sherry and whatever. And somehow, um, <laughs> somehow my photo shoot, uh, thing came up cause he asked me like, so where did you do it in Bulgaria, whatever. So we started talking about it and then he didn't see my pictures before. So I showed, showed some to him yeah. and he was like, Ooh, holy shit. Like the, it looks crazy. And, um, he asked me like how long it took. It's like, well, three months, but you know, this is how it looked like when I started that diet and, you know, like. I was leaner than he will ever be <laughs> by when I actually started the diet. And um, he said, well, I mean, you know, it's amazing. If you can do this, it means you can do anything. Like if you can get yourself to do this, like starve yourself for three months, you can achieve other goals like this. Like it, it teaches you that. And it was, um, I was listening to that and I definitely thought of that myself, but it was really frustrating um, for me for a long time because it's not the case. Like I have goals in other areas, which I set for a really long time and I still didn't get to them. And like I said, some of those goals I didn't get to because I just could not get myself to take action. And some of those actions are not even like that hard. It's not like, you know, I could do this if I did these crazy, crazy difficult things. Like some of that is like literally just like put your ass in the chair, take some time to do it. It's a matter of time and effort and you can do it. And I just couldn't fucking get myself to do it. It's literally like fat loss. And, um... And I don't know why I cannot see it that way. Like, why can't I get my freaking head to realize, like, man, if you can starve yourself for three months, when, when, where, whereas you were, like, lean to begin with, you can do other things that are way easier than this. Like, why can't you do them? Uh, it's really frustrating to me, but, um, yeah, whatever. Some honestly, honestly, uh, diarrhea from me. 
Mm, yeah, I don't know. My best tip is <laughs> try sleeping more, which I know it doesn't help you, but uh, that's what I found is that when I, I, I when, like for example, last week, because uh, the gyms have been open for like two weeks, and last week I was in the morning shift, I was fucking useless. Like I came home at like three something. And I was laying in bed. I was either watching some movies or I was just laying in bed and trying to fall asleep. And I couldn't fall asleep. I was so tired because I wasn't really able to, to sleep at night because um, I had to wake up early. And, you know, due to the um, my circadian rhythm has been shifted, I guess. So, you know, I, I got used, I got used, used to going to the sleep late. So, so anyway, so now or this week you know that i was able to sleep in whatever in i was able to sleep like eight plus nine hours just felt so much better and i had this much you know so much clarity and focus and whatnot and that's the only thing i know it's i know you have some issues with sleep so no but um uh, yeah and unfortunately you're right because yeah i, I do have issues with sleeping and I wish I could just say like, yeah, I, it doesn't impact me because it really does. Like when I'm well slept, I'm a different person. Like I am honestly, like I think I'm a fairly pleasant person when I'm well slept. Like I'm <laughs> relatively funny, relatively cheerful, whatever, um, not easily annoyed, whatever. If I'm like really sleep deprived, man, <laughs> grumpy, <laughs> grumpy, cynical, irritable, ugh, not a fun person to be around. Everyone, I think everyone's like that. Like, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's probably degrees to it, but to some extent, like everyone is just that's how you became. I mean, it's just you. You cannot really regulate your emotions. Your, it's just that's what happens when you don't sleep enough. Yeah, yeah, it's really unfortunate. Like, I'm so jealous of those people that, like, um, obviously anybody can. Like, I, I know I can take steps to improve my sleep. Like, there are some things that will definitely improve it consistently but like there are just those people that are just fucking bulletproof when it comes to sleep like nothing can screw it up like they can die at like literally like i don't know their father can die like an hour before bed and still like they're yeah. just out like a light and sleep yep. like nine hours and wake up refreshed i'm so jealous of those yeah i mean it's genetics like with everything there is you know um you have to deal with the card you've been dealt with and uh yeah. unfortunate that that's just the reality yeah. of it so yeah, man. Um, should we wrap up uh, at this point? Because like hour and a half, that's pretty decent. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think it was a cool combo. Um, some parts will be edited out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, guys, so follow us. Our things will be linked in the description. So Andras can be found at the Muscle Engineer Podcast. And you can follow him on Instagram. And follow me at the SSD Podcast. All about becoming superhuman. Unlimited discipline. Just kidding. Not funny. Anyway, see you guys.